Hi everyone, my name is Paulina. I'm the Community and Events Manager at Sea Stars in Latin America. We are about to start our episode number one of Sea Stars World at Arms. Get ready to hear five startup pitches and an announcement on who will represent their country on the final. Hello, Seed Stars. Javier from Quantix over here. This is Santiago from Pegasi, Venezuela. If we work together, we can make a change. Do not uh, overthink your ideas. Uh, focus on solving a problem better than anyone else. Never stop hustling. How the selection process of winners at the Seed Stars World Competition work this year? Startups start with filling the application form. After the review, those who meet the minimum criteria get invited to the online Seed Stars Academy. Throughout the Academy, we monitor the performance of the entrepreneurs as they get assigned to courses and tests. Upon the completion of the Academy startup, they score the highest, get invited to meet with the Seed Stars World team and mentors on one-on-one. -on -one. As the last step, we invite outstanding experts in their fields as jury members to the online pitching episodes. All those components help us form a solid and complex decision on who Seed Stars startup finalists are. Let me introduce you to our jury members. Hernan Haro, co-founder and general partner on Mr. Pink. Patricia Sainz, founder and managing partner at EWA Capital. Sebastián Molina, VT analyst at Six Stars. And Ana Ayau, managing director at People Fund. This event wouldn't be possible without the support of our partners Accenture, Procomer, and Amazon Web Services. Thank you for supporting our competition and the startups. The Impact Revolution is transforming all organizations for the better from corporate to NGOs, from governments and lawmakers to even startups. This is making investors to look for more holistic views when evaluating companies. I mean, look at these numbers. 41% year-over-year growth on impact investment and 40 trillion US dollars asset under management focused on ESGs. Impact is lower risk. The question is, how do we measure and communicate this impact with objective data? For that, we created Quantix, where we help socially conscious organizations to understand and manage their impact through our software. We charge a one-time onboarding fee for the design of the measurement and an annual subscription fee of our platform based on functionalities. Since we launched in 2018, we have worked with more than 55 clients in nine countries of the region, reaching 390,000 US dollars in sales, 56 of them in annual recurring revenue. My last question for you is, do you know your impact? Thank you. Great, Javier, congratulations. I do believe like impact is something like it's like very important right now and to measure it is like really something. So I would like to know it's like how long does it take for a new company to adapt the, the, the software and is it something that you see that is scalable or is it like how long does it take? Well, uh, first, we have a process of the design of the measurement. It doesn't mean we adapt the software. What we do is we understand the problem that you're trying to, to achieve with your company or with your project. And then we select the indicators that are going to be specific for, your, for, for, for you to understand your impact. That is the, the design process. It usually takes from one month to three months, depending on, the, on how deep you want to measure your impact. Hello, Javier. Quick question about your revenues. Can you talk about what percent is MRR versus other services? Uh, fine. In 2020, we have reached in MRR around uh, 3,000 US dollars uh, each month. The rest, um, our main income comes from the design of the process, that it's a, a lump sum, is usually about 5,000 US dollars to 6,000, depending on, on the type of client. And the use of the platform, it has two, two different uh, segments. First, the use of the platform itself, that is about 2,000 to 3,000 US dollars per year. 
and the other part is the data collection that you're going to use to get this data. What gross profit are you forecasting for your subscription revenues? Uh, perfect. We're reaching 2020 with this month. Well, we're almost reaching break-even point. And for next year, we're aiming to uh, increase our sales to 500,000 US dollars. Well, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Kenneth and I'm the founder of Edna. Uh, let me start with a question, actually. Um, have you contacted a business using a digital channel lately? Most likely, yes. Uh, customers are now more connected than ever. Uh, now, let me ask you a second question. What happens if you contact the same business, but now using a different channel or even the same channel? Most of the times, the business do not know it is you, which results in an increased cost to serve you, uh, a slow response, and normally a disconnected experience. We're building, we're building a digital customer service platform, uh, which is a platform that connects all of your channels, digital channels, in one single place, while leveraging our conversational AI technology so that we can add a, a bot for each one of those channels and automate even more than 30% of the initial interaction with the customer. So we're looking for $450,000 so that we can build our team, um, our technology, and take the customer service to the next level. Hello, congratulations. I think it's very important. I've had plenty of of situations like that. I was just wondering with so many bots uh, in chat boxes, how do you differentiate yourself from your competitors and who's your biggest competitor? Yeah, actually with this movement, with this investment that we want to do is, is to move away from that. Right now we're a, a chatbot uh, development company. We have our own proprietary uh, chatbot creation platform, which is called ChatHub. So now we're building chatbots for enterprises like FedEx, Toyota, Hyundai, some other clients. But we want to move away from that to consolidate everything in one place and then add the bots just to be able to be like a virtual workforce for the businesses, right? Our main competitors right now in terms of chatbot creation are like ChatFuel, ManyChat, some other platforms like those, uh, like self-creation uh, platforms. But we want, again, to, to move away from that, be able to create just one platform for the businesses to use, not only to manage their human agents, but also the you know, the, their virtual um, workforce as well. Congratulations first. Um, can you talk a little bit uh, about the technology? Are you using a chat engine or are you like coding that from scratch? Uh, what, uh, how you go about like your uh, machine learning to, to really like train this bot? Is that something that you have developed yourself internally or again, are you using an off the shelf solution for that? Yeah, uh, normally we have developed some algorithms ourselves, but now we also are uh, leveraging some technology that is there and which is very mature for us to use. Like for example, right now we're using machine learning module that which, in which is integrated in Firebase from Google. So, so we don't have to create all of that from scratch and we can leverage something that is already there. Can you tell us something about like the outcome from your current uh, clients? I mean, like in, in terms of financial, like, how they have performed? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I'm showing here some logos of our existing clients. Um, most of them, I will say more than 90% of them have automated even 30%. Uh, that's why I mentioned 30 during the pitch because that's the normal um, percentage of automation that they achieve within the first year uh, by using our bots, right? And then there's a cost reduction, which is approximately an average of 35 to 40%. Uh, cost reduction to serve their clients because we're automating most of the answers. However, what we've noticed, and that's why we're building this, is that not only we want to automate that initial portion, but we also want to know the customer and integrate the other channels because right now it's a little bit disconnected. Uh, welcome to Own the Trip. Uh, we help you build and book your dream vacations. So there's a growing tendency for travelers to choose customized experiences traditional vacation packages. However, this actually poses a challenge for travel providers on traditional online platforms. Our solution, our solution is simple. It's really simple, but it actually works. 
you can actually ask for whatever you want for your trip. And for example, let me give you a really great example. We had, uh, we had a traveler who actually asked for a limo pickup and uh, an Airbnb apartment and wait for it. They actually asked for a mariachi band. Um, so whatever you want, basically. And um, our system matches your request with suitable providers using artificial intelligence. Congratulations first. And I just had a quick question. Have you considered or defined the process and the liability of, of canceled trips or changes in itinerary? Yes, actually. So uh, whenever a, travel wants, a traveler wants a change in itinerary, they can always place a change request. They can place a change request or um, um, if they're not interested. So basically they receive uh, a whole bunch of offers from travel providers and uh, they can choose the one they like. So if they don't want to book a trip, that's fine. They don't have to book a trip. Congratulations first. I have a question about your pricing strategy. I saw somewhere else that for larger ticket items, you are not charging the operator, like you are only charging the, the user. Um, why did you decide to do that? So uh, we actually uh, take 3% from the operator. That's mostly the credit card processing fees and everything. Um, and uh, the operators are more important for us because we need to have as many operators sign up on our platform as possible, uh, which is why um, 10% from the, from the total cost of the trip from the customer. But mostly we want uh, more operators to sign up on our platform who offer a variety of services because we use artificial intelligence to match the right type of operator with the, with the request from the, from the traveler. What would you say is your competitive advantage? Is it like pricing or is it like something differentiated? What's like absolutely your, like your difference? So uh, we have a variety of, uh, of providers on our platform. Some who specialize in, for example, weddings and proposals. Some who, uh, who specialize in honeymoons and romantic getaways. Um, some who specialize solely in, in you know, uh, seeing all the unexperienced uh, places in in a particular location. So that would be one that we actually talk to the local, you know, the, the smaller ones, the really small ones who know everything about a, a location, who know the intricate details and how to organize everything. That could be one. The second is that we give the traveler as many options as possible. So they get multiple offers or multiple trip offers from, um, from providers and they can actually choose whichever they like based on the rating or based on whatever the offer has to, uh, the, the provider has to offer. So they get to choose, they're, they're in control of what they exactly want. Hi everybody. Uh, do you know that teachers in a school need more time and students more motivation? Teachers create new class with Boki in a simple and revolutionary way. Teachers find the most inspiring content and then they create their own activities, games, and simulations. When the class begins, the students pay more attention and interact in real time with the big screen, collaborating and competing. We work with thousands of students and children, students and teachers with UNESCO and UNICEF, and what all of us know about children. Children are full of curiosity and potential. With Boki, a teacher inspires them to develop their own potential. Children need to be really prepared to make this world better. Thank you. Hi, first of all, congratulations. Just a quick question. How do you plan to scale around Latin America data? So you had a very steep scaling strategy. Okay, we are growing in Chile, Mexico, and Uruguay. And in the next six months, we want uh, to grow uh, in Mexico, especially, and in Chile. Congratulations. Um, so, yeah. is this an, so I saw on the side that there is an option to download an app. So, can you explain a little bit about that? 
Okay, we have more than one product, okay? You see a platform, a web platform, okay? That uh, in this platform, the teachers uh, edit the content. And also we have the book, okay? That is an app, okay? That students download, okay? I, I do have a question. Like the, the things that you give to the teachers, is it like a prepare on your own? Or is it like from open? Um, education source or how how is it done? Yeah. Yes, well, uh, I have uh, 20 years uh, around in EdTech projects, okay, a lot of time. And after Boki, uh, uh, I create a publisher, okay. And in the publisher, we create a lot of contents. In, so in Boki, we start using the content of my old company. Okay, and we also uh, make deals with another publishers. So, Nicolas, can you just tell me a little bit about, you know, who's, who's your target customer? Like, are you selling directly to teachers or professors, or are you going through the school administration? Okay, we, we go to schools directly, okay? Uh, directors, uh, administrative and pedagogy uh, support. Okay, we make the deal with the college. Okay, sometimes uh, the college uh, ask fathers to pay the, the material, the books, the content, the platform. Hi, my name is Luis Santiago and I'm the CEO of Pegasi, a startup dedicated to the management of healthcare information. We make it accessible, clear and secure for patients, physicians and service providers in the developing world where over 70% of the information is still on paper and causes adverse events in one out of 10 hospitalization cases. In Pegasi, we structure and process everyday clinical and administrative information through Pegasi Map, our healthcare information system, then aggregate and anonymize it through Pegasi BI, our business intelligence platform. Even with COVID-19, we grew our sales 3x as of today during 2020, accelerated our growth with Catapult Accelerator, and now working with IBM, World Economic Forum, and Rush Laboratories delivering top tech solutions for the healthcare sector. To expand this work throughout Latin America, we're currently seeking $500,000 on our seed round. We invite you to join us in delivering the better healthcare for the developing world. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations. So my question much. would be, uh, what is unique about this? Because we all know that the type of software uh, mm -hmm. for managing in the health sector has been a booming in the past years and it's a very competitive one. So what's the unique part of Pegasi? Okay, we have two main distinctions between the, all of the software that offers in the market. The first one is our software is the only one that's available online and offline. We have a technology that we are patenting called vSync, which allows you to have a local server and have it on the cloud at the same time uh, in order to tackle how Latin America is not stable in the internet side. And the other thing that's uh, really unique of our proposal is that we aggregate and anonymize all patient information to protect it. But at the same time, we are producing business intelligence that allows you to track endemic and epidemic diseases in real time. So this is not just a tool for the physician or the center, but also for governments, multilateral organizations and NGOs to predict what's happening in the region, real time public health vigilance. Congratulations. I have Thank a quick you. question. What has been the biggest a challenge and how are you tackling changing the cultural mindset of using paper for doctors? Well, that, that's a great question. And fortunately, we have an experience of over 25 years in the healthcare IC, IT sector from our team. And the biggest challenge is uh, physicians to get them and drop the pencil down uh, to adapt to a digital format. And in order to do it, you have to provide them with tools that seem the way they think. And that's why we have developed our solutions side by side with physicians all throughout the years, side by side with patients and with service providers in order for them to see the way they think uh, in the platform. So it's really easy for them to adapt. Thank you. So Luis, congratulations. Can you talk a little bit about your pricing, revenue model, um, and how long does it take to break into a new clinic or a new center? I'm assuming like a fairly long, uh, uh, sales cycle sometimes. 
Yeah, it, it depends on the size. And thank you very much for the question. Uh, depends on the size. Uh, we usually do SaaS, software as a service uh, business model uh, for Pegasi Med. Uh, it's $40 per physician in each clinic and depends on the number of physicians that the clinic has. That depends on the business model. And uh, usually sales cycle depends on the size of the institution. For a small clinical consultation, we go from one week to five weeks to, in order to uh, have it already operating in the software. For a small to medium clinic, can go within one to three months. And for larger organizations, the sales cycle is usually between four and seven months. So sometimes it's even easier to onboard very large institutions than smaller ones. Sales cycles are um, kind of like the same in those, but then you, the size of the ticket that you get with the larger institution is much bigger. So we will start uh, with Quantix. We think that you have a great potential and that the impact measurement is starting to be a trend in big companies. But we also think that you have to define your differentiation to be scalable and grow exponentially. Edna, your solution is really great, scalable, and is a necessity for companies to implement efficient solutions of, uh, for their customers. But you may need to define your competitive edge in such saturated market. On Trip, we think that you have built a great solution for the Latin American market, and we like the fact that you support the small businesses to digitalize their products. But we think the process should be automated to the operators as well, so the traveler can receive a proposal immediately. Bucky, we think that as a team, you have a lot of potential. We like the fact that you are growing in Latin America, but we think that you may need to work on the go-to-market strategy and how to differentiate from other ed tech support applications. And Pegasi, we think that your solution is very complete and we found interesting the business intelligence tool that you have implemented on Pegasi, but we are afraid that you're in, you are in a really saturated market and that you have a big challenge to, conv to convince doctors to move to a digital channel. I will just have to say it right now. <laughs> so the winner of the Fit Stars Latam episode number one is Pegasi. Congratulations, Pegasi. This is totally unexpected. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, super happy to be here with you guys. And uh, this was a very tough competition. Uh, I've seen the startups and the people that went to the regionals in uh, in Latin America, and the things that are being done are awesome. So it's a, a super honor to be just to be here with you. And this distinction is completely, completely unexpected. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Pegasi, and thank you very much to everyone who joined our event. Stay tuned for the next two episodes of Latin America.